So, let's talk about playing on fast tunes. One, two, three, four. question always comes up with my students and on my last Zoom community call the question came up again. How to play on fast tunes? While there are no magic formulas or easy shortcuts, there are however some things that I know will make the difference and will hopefully shorten your path to becoming comfortable playing on fast tunes. So let's dive in and do some reverse engineering. I wanted to start with these two examples to illustrate what in my mind represent Two opposing ways to go about playing on fast tunes. Two ways, however, which both have a raison d'etre or a reason to be. Two ways which can actually coexist and when balanced together can provide the best possible experience for a listener, in my opinion. I'll be using these two examples as reference points throughout the videos to highlight concepts and ideas that, in my opinion, make a huge difference in becoming comfortable playing at fast tunes and had the biggest impact on my own development and ability to play on faster tempos as comfortable as possible. The very first thing is always seek to develop control. Control of what? I've said it before in other videos. Control of tone and timing. Regardless of any tempo, you never want to sacrifice tone and timing Ever. The pillars of the quality of your delivery and of your musicality are in your tone and in your timing. In order to have the best possible control of tone and timing, right hand and left hand need to have the best possible synergy and coordination. So let's look at some exercise designed to develop and increase synergy and coordination over time. We're going to start with quarter notes at a speed that is relatively comfortable for you at the moment, and then you will test your comfort zone gradually increasing the BPMs over time, beats per minute. Start on one note or string, force yourself to no breaks or pauses, straight quarter notes all the way through, and again, focus on absolute coordination and synergy with the objective of producing the best possible tone with the best possible timing. One, two, three, four. <laughs> We now move on to triplets to further put to the test that coordination and that synergy. Three, four. Next step, straight eighth notes. I'm at 300 BPM right now, but that's not the point. Find the speed that is in your control and gradually move up to test your level of control. Four. Okay, so once I develop that coordination with one note or one note at a time, I now add another note to see how well I can control two notes at a time. Three, four. And 
on we go. Let's add another note. Three, four. So you get the point and you can be creative with this kind of work. You want to keep those common denominators but you can find your own variations. To be able to express phrases and ideas at high tempos, you want to first be able to develop the control of the mechanics and the technique to support the delivery of those ideas at whatever tempo necessary. Okay, number two. To learn to respect, trust and accept the first idea that comes around, the first idea that appears. You see, at fast tempo, there is no time to think. You must train yourself to react and execute. And the first step is learning to be okay and making best use of that first idea that appears. Think of a good race car driver. The harmonic progression of a tune is like a track for a race car driver. You're going round and round over the same structure and the same sequence of chords. Just like a race car driver is going around the same track over and over again. You as a musician, as a guitarist, have to know your track so well that you can operate in advance of the changes and not in reaction to them. If you take Joseph Joseph, for example, right? Starts on A minor. Where does it go to? It goes to that D minor, or you could call it B half diminished, which then leads to E7. Then that E7 leads back to A minor. You can also think of it from the point of view of a good video game player. I was never a great video game player, but there was a little phase in my teens where I played Tetris. If you're old enough, you remember that game. And it was amazing for me to notice how when I started to play the game, if I tried the highest levels, I would lose in a matter of seconds. My brain was just not able to process all the information needed to make that right decision in the shortest amount of time possible. But if you keep playing, you start developing what I call the automatic execution response. It's a little phrase I actually came up with during this Zoom call. It was noted to me that it could be a great concept to formalize automatic execution response. You simply know by repetition instinctively what's the best decision to make in that given moment without having to think. And as a musician, your technical and mechanical skills need to match up with your musical reflexes and with your musical ideas. Number three, think language. Now let's get it out of our head that improvising means inventing or creating a new language on the spot. That's not improvising, that's not even realistic. Great improvising doesn't happen in a bubble. Great improvising happens within the context of a, an existing language. Think of it this way. If I ask you to describe your day in three minutes without pre-scripting anything, how would you go about it? You wouldn't invent a new language on the spot or just invent new sentences. You would use your existing language or your existing knowledge of your phrases and grammar to come up with the words and the sentences that describe your day or that convey the ideas that you want to convey about that day. If I ask you the same question tomorrow, you would more than likely use similar phrases or similar sequence of sentences, but it wouldn't be identical. You would convey the same story, but with different words, sentences, order of phrases, and that's what improvising is. You're using a language, except every time it might be different. Your knowledge of that language allows you to select and order your phrases, sentences, and words still in a way that conveys that story. So let's get it out of our head that knowing predetermined or pre-established phrases is not improvising or is shameful in any way. On the contrary, it's vital that over time you master and create and learn phrases that you can apply to specific harmonic situations, to specific chords, and that are the base of your vocabulary. Also, just listen to any of the greats, Django, Charlie Parker, anyone. They all have their go-to phrases, their trademark licks, if you want to call them, that they use as a basis of their language and that they are capable of varying and reassembling and rearranging on the fly. But there are certain phrases that they will always go back to, certain ideas that they will repeat in almost, almost every tune. Improvising means reassembling and reorganizing those ideas and those phrases in creative, innovative, 
and very personal ways. So a large part of practice should be about learning and consolidating your chord phrases and vocabulary by chord type and by chord progression. Number four, don't be afraid to repeat. Don't escape from a good idea. Now, of course, yes, this can depend on what point you are in a solo. Are you in a climax moment? Are you trying to build tension? Climax moments can be high intensity phrasing or the repetition of a motif to highlight a certain passage or phrase. When you're trying to build tension, you make better use of playing and then pauses, pauses and playing, which then highlight that phrase even more. So depending on where you are in a solo, you might want to highlight more building that tension or you want to highlight more that climax moment. But in general, it's almost never bad, I would say, to repeat a phrase that has a strong rhythmical and melodic identity. Let's go back to example number two, for example. Three, four. So you can repeat a phrase from the harmonic point of view, playing same notes or playing almost the same notes, varying certain elements of it. Or you can repeat the phrase rhythmically, reproducing or reintroducing that same rhythmic idea of the phrase. Or you can do both. But all of this helps to grab the listener's attention and to hold it throughout the solo. Also notice next time you listen to a concert, you'll notice that Many times when people applaud solos is when an idea is repeated, when an idea is highlighted over and over again, that will stick. And usually that creates a strong response from the crowd, more so than when a soloist is flying all over the place, which can have its purpose and have its moment, but it's typically best to build up to that climax moment rather than necessarily play all the way through that way, as I did in example one a little bit. Being able to play like in example one can be very important because it allows you to be ready when you do have a climax moment where you want to express maximum intensity in your playing. But I would never recommend playing your entire solo up there because it just exhausts your audience and yourself. So don't shy away from repetition. Don't shy away from milking a good idea and enhancing it. Number five kind of goes hand in hand with point number four, but I want to definitely highlight this individually. Think rhythmically. So great improvising can happen when phrases have a strong identity from a harmonic point of view. In other words, you're playing strong melodies and or when they have strong rhythmical identity. Playing with strong rhythmical identity is really at the core what holds your listeners and what grabs their attention. So again, we go back to tone and timing. Timing, you want to be in control of the rhythm and the timing of your phrases, always. Number six, think storytelling. Think tension and resolution, even at fast tempos, or I would say especially. If you listen again back to example one, being the extreme of the climax moment, I'm basically filling up the whole space, which again can be very effective if done at the right moment. But if my whole story is that, in other words, a full blurb of notes, after the initial excitement, you leave the audience with exhaustion and overwhelm, besides getting exhausted and overwhelmed yourself while you play it. So you want to be able to build the ability and build that card to have that card, but you then want to use it sparingly and consciously. So in storytelling, of course, we have tension building and then resolution. So this is something you want to be always aware of, even at fast tempos. So in general, even at fast tempos, try to build that tension, creating the right repetition, creating the right space between phrases, playing pauses, creating a strong rhythmical identity, as well as harmonic identity, which means playing with melodic coherence, which means that one phrase should organically lead to the next phrase, as good melodies do. And then know when you want to come to your climax moments, and be able to, of course, express those with the highest possible accuracy and intensity. Once again, climax moments should be worked on and pre-rehearsed. There is no shame in that. 
You want to have your core of phrases that you know you can pull off in the moment and using them at the right time in the right order is improvising. Make no mistake about it. Okay, so a great challenge in all of this is being able to always stay loose and relaxed on fast tempos especially. Being able to develop in real time that awareness of how much tension is being generated is critical. You always want to have your radar on and realize okay, I'm tensing up here, I need to find a way to remain loose and relax. It's not going to happen all the time, but your awareness should be always there and you should strive to always maintain maximum relaxation and looseness throughout. Of course, there's a natural tendency when we play close to our limit to tense up, but you'll notice this has a very bad influence on your overall tone and timing as well as on your enjoyment of playing. To begin this journey the best way possible, I recommend watching this video right here that I posted a while back. This should get you on the right path towards developing those skills to be able to play fast as comfortably as possible. I truly hoped you enjoyed this video. I hope this video really helps you. Don't be afraid to ask more questions if there are any in the comments or Leave your ideas. If you have other strategies or other things that you know have helped you, I'm totally happy and, and look forward to hearing about it. Of course, if you like this video, you already know what to do, guys. Subscribe, like, share, and all that good YouTube stuff. Helps me, helps me keep going with this channel. Don't forget in the description, there's always some useful resources, such as my new ebook, Gypsy Jazz Guitar Mastery, starting Gypsy Jazz on the right foot. There's my link to my free Zooms. There's my link to the free transcriptions. Once again, I hope this video gives you the motivation and the inspiration to attack playing fast tunes. And we'll see you in the next video soon. And you should strive to always maintain maximum relaxation and looseness throughout.